Word. I even get the black cat that comes up for the Halloween. <laughs> All right, Don, we are recording. What are we going to be talking about tonight? Right. This is the time of the year. Everybody should be in their hive, checking and see how things are going. And you should have treating on your list, changing out boxes, and doing a lot of that maintenance. Now's a good time to start building a few new boxes for next year. Um, I don't know how everybody's treating uh, for beetles. But uh, I had mentioned on the last chat about these, these traps right here. They're uh, Max Force. I don't know if people had used these. Uh, these are good for like maintenance of beetles in your hive. And if you don't have a lot of beetles, one in the bottom. And my suggestion on a strong hive, I've been down to my yard and on the strong doubles that we got, them bees are taking that thing and dragging it out. And you wouldn't believe how a little bee like that could grab that. So my suggestion would be take a staple gun. You know, if you don't have your bottom boards uh, stapled to your, your high box, you can lift it up. Uh, it's good for a two people operation. And just put one staple in at the back of the hive. If you've got moderate beetles in it, I find that you can put one of these in each corner and put one in your super or your second box. Now these things are supposed to stick. I don't know if you can see the back. They have this paper that you can pull off. It's got a little adhesive on there. This is one way. See how that adhesive comes off there? They'll stick on the bottom board, but they still get pulled out. So the staple works good. That's one way. Uh, the old original way is boric acid in a political sign. Uh, these things, if you're running several hundred hive, is, is convenient. They cost a little more, but you can basically do the same thing with a political sign. Just get you like a three by five piece of political sign, cut you a V in one side of it. You can buy a roach bait. It's called flipper now, and it comes in a large, it looks like a huge syringe. And when you push the injector on it, it comes out like a little worm, about a one eighth inch in diameter. And all you need is a piece about three quarters of an inch long and put it in that political sign. And you staple that in the back of your hive. A lot of people are a little worried about these things. I was at first, but you can see there's no way the bees could even come in contact with the thing. There's a small openings in there where the beetles go in, they eat the the ingredients and they come out and they die, the bees fall them off. So it's not contaminating your hive. The next thing you need to be worrying about is right now, if you're using OA, I would do two treatments this month. If you've got a lot of beetles in there or if you've got a lot of mites in there right now, I'm gonna do three consecutive OA treatments. And that's for the vaporizer. The ProVap is what we've been using. Um, Three weeks ago, I think it was, or four weeks ago, we did a drench. And I'm not going to give you the measurements on it. Um, Randy Oliver on scientific beekeeping, he's got some formulas for it. But uh, we bought a brand new sprayer, and it's about a three-gallon capacity. We mixed up the OA, and we shook it up real good in a quart jar, and then we put it in with uh, the corn syrup, the high fru fructose corn syrup and we give them a drench. Well, you can set that sprayer on a light mist and give them a quick mist. It works good if you got two people working. One can kind of crack the hive open, especially if you're running doubles, and give them a quick spray and just move to the next hive. It's fast, it's efficient. I know a lot of people that don't want to put nothing in their hive, but if you want to run a business, you can't afford to lose hives. If these was cows out there in the field, you know, if you lost the same amount of cows, some beekeepers lose hives, you'd be out of business the first year. So you have to do what it takes to stay in business. And I don't feel that a lot of the treatments that we have to use are detrimental to the hive. Uh, you have to come through the winter with a certain number of good, strong hives to build your base back again. And uh, changing out hives, I've got videos on that. And that's basically get another hive preferably paint it, get it all set, 
Um, that's a luxury for most big keepers. Uh, I have got boxes down there in my yards that been out there, new wood, three years with no paint. Like right now, we're changing out a lot of stuff. Change out your box, get it all painted, set the new box in the original position and go through that high frame by frame and examine every single frame. Look at it, look in the crevices, look in everything. Look for beetles hide, look for the mites. That's how you're gonna go through winter with happy hives. And then uh, <clears throat> best thing to do is uh, get your numbers up as high as you can. Uh, if you got mated queens now, it's still not too late. Uh, we're cutting down eight frames and making two splits out of them, two five frames. And what we're doing is taking the original hive, taking the queen and moving it to a new location and shaking the majority. 90% of the frames with 90% uh, of the bees on them, shaking them in front of the hive in a new location. Put the new mated queen back in the original position in a five frame box. Now you get all the workers coming right back and that hive, as soon as that queen gets out, they're gonna lay and you don't have all that. I consider it the welfare, them young bees hatching out. They're the ones that really go through that honey this time of the year. But I feel if you get rid of the beetles, get rid of the mites on that goldenrod, you should be getting quite a bit of honey coming in. Now, since we're talking about that, I know a lot of students are in far away, distant places. If you're close by and you need lumber, let me know ahead of time. We'll set the saw up and we'll start sawing you some wood. There's really no excuse why you can't build numbers up. I mean, the sky is the limit. If you've got a sawmill, the wood's free, it grows on trees every day. People are paying to haul it off to the dump. All you have to do is go get it. Put your labor in, build them boxes. Anybody got any questions on them treating or anything else about bees? Everyone's being shy so far tonight. We certainly got some questions. I'm not that boring, am I? <laughs> oh, Nancy, you're muted. She's trying to talk. Hang on, you're still not connected yet. Okay, David and Tracy, go ahead. Hey, good evening, Don. Folks, how's everybody doing? We're doing all good. I hope everybody else is. Yeah, enjoying the fall weather. It's pretty nice out here. Uh, I guess. My question is, uh, how late do you go in selling nukes before the end of the year? I'm still selling a few. I, I plan to cut off in, in a couple more weeks, but just wonder what your experience was. My experience, and I've mentioned it on chats before, I sell queens and nukes right up to November, 30th November. Now, uh, on queens, if I pull them out of a mating nuke, I'm selling them for 35. If I pull them out of a, a running nuke right now, I'm gonna charge 50 to 75 bucks because basically that's a nuke I could sell for $200 in the spring and I can't yeah. afford to sell it for $35. But to help someone out, and that's something you might wanna think about, you're gonna get, uh, pull that queen out of there and then hope you're gonna have uh, drones to get mated and have that thing ready to go. Um, mm -hmm. I can do it if we have queen cells, I'll take a, Five frame nuke box, it maybe it's got two frames in there, but it's got a laying queen. I'll pull the laying queen out, either make a split with it or I'll sell it and I'll show the customer the queen is laying. I'll throw a virgin in there and then I'll hope for the best. But a lot of times at the end of this month, you're just, it's a big gamble. The farther on you go, it's a bigger gamble. So these yeah. are going to be at a premium from now <clears throat> to November 30th. And if you're selling a nuke now, before November 30th, uh, that's possibly three nukes that you could be selling in the springtime. So, you know, everybody's got a different situation. If you're tight on money and you need a cash flow, then you sell some, but get a premium on it. Okay, yeah. I, we're, we're just selling a few now. Most of our season is over on the nukes, but we're still getting some interest. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we're, we're not doing any queens at this time. So all of our queens are in the nukes, and if we're going to sell, we're going to sell it all, you know, one at a time. But but I think we're going to stop here in a, a few more weeks and just build up for the winter, and then have, be ready with 
a bunch of nukes in the spring. Are you grafting yet over there? Uh, I grafted all the way up to uh, a couple of weeks ago and then uh, and then stopped. We weren't getting much of a, a take on the grafts and the, the drone population has gone down quite a bit. So we just stopped. Oh. Well, if you got enough hives there and you've got a few drones in each one, you know, you can get them mated or you can put some green comb in there. It all depends on how you want to run it. But uh, queen cells is a good seller right now because there's a lot of people that have hives that they don't want to throw an expensive queen in there. They, you know, they borderline, so they'll throw a queen cell and hope for the best. That's a good and idea. Yeah, cells, sure. cells, uh, when you grab, uh, just we make our own uh, out of wax. They're worth 10 cents a piece to 15 cents a piece. And you can set you up 50 on a board and you could do about three or 4,000 in just a half an hour. It don't take nothing. Yeah, the grafting, uh, we've, we've really enjoyed doing that this year. And it's every week we, we've got a new graft in. And so most of them we're getting good takes on. And I think we just thought maybe it wasn't really possible to get a good take now to the end of the year. But we, we, should, we could go try it again. Well, you can get good takes. The reason you don't get a good take right now is you're not putting enough new bees in there. If you bees, put yeah. plenty of new bees in there, you're going to get the, the cells to take. Now, okay. getting them mated, that's a different story. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So double, thank you, Don. They should have drones in there. We've seen some. Uh, it's just the, the numbers have dwindled a lot, so we weren't sure they were going to get mated properly. I had some some versions I put out a few weeks ago uh, from a, a graft, and I had maybe 50% of them mated when it was done, so it looked like things had slowed down a, a bunch. But what we're noticing on singles, you don't seem to have as many drones, but all the doubles that we run for the shaking purposes, for shaking out packages, those seem to have a whole lot more drones in them. The population of drones is a lot higher. Yeah. Okay. Good tips. Thank you, Don. Okay. okay. Over to Matt. Go ahead, Matt. Unmute. There you go. Uh, yeah. My question is, I've got a bunch of frames that uh, I pulled out this summer and been lazy and ain't cleaned them up. What's the best way to clean them frames up? Are they natural wax or are they plastic? Uh, both. Well, what I do, I got, uh, we got a bunch of plastic frames and what I'm doing is just taking a high tool and scraping them off as much as I can and then just bump them a little bit stack them up. I got a stack in the basement about six foot high. And even in a basement, you're going to get wax moth in there. But some people say, well, that's going to be a little bad. But I found that once the wax, wax moths get in there, they start eating up those lower places in the indentations in that plastic, especially if it's full of propolis. And then you'll get these light webs on there. Take it outside in the springtime or when, you know, midwinter when you want to set them up. Take a steel brush and give them a good brushing. Take a hose to them. They come up clean. Then get you a four-inch roller brush or roller and uh, just roll a new wax on there and stick them in. But I wouldn't only put one at a time in a hive. If you put like two to three, they'd spend too much time trying to draw out that frame. You want them to make bees and everything else. So one frame at a time when they get it drawn out or get it at least half drawn out as far as cell depth, half of it. And then get it laid up, then stick in another one, but don't stick them side by side. Stick it over a couple combs. Yeah. Uh, what about just the frames, the natural? Uh... Well, we got a lot of just natural comb that uh, got stretched out. In fact, I got half a truckload down here right now I'm working on. Uh, I'm doing about two, if they're old frames, like black looking, really black, I do two frames. If they're one year or two year old and they're a light cocoa colored, not a dark chocolate, but a cocoa color, I could run about three to four frames in there. But I'm using a large kettle, about a 20 quart kettle, and it's got two gallons of water in it. And I the maximum amount is four frames. You put any more than that, you have too many cocoons in there, and you're not going to be able to press out all the wax. And if you get a, uh, a strainer, the cheap ones, the three or four dollar ones, 
by the time you do three melts, you'll push the screen right out. Get a commercial strainer. There are 12, 10 to 12 inch ones. They're around $20. They got like screen wire on the inside. Then they got like hardware cloth on the outside. It's stainless steel. I've got one down there that I press the heck out of it. And I get, my combs are dry when they come out. You get every drop of that wax. And right yeah. now, wax is expensive. Well, what do you do with the frame itself after you get all that off of it? I scrape them down with a knife and I throw them on a big pile. I probably got three to 400 right now in a pile. And then a week to two weeks before I start putting new waxing, I got a Rubbermaid container and I don't know how many gallons it holds. I guess it holds at least 15, 20 gallons. I put a cup or a cup and a half of bleach in there and I can put about 10 or 12 frames, stand them up in there, leave them in there five to 10 minutes and the black moldy looking frames will come out nice and shiny new looking light wood and when you do that i find that if you're working on a lot of old frames set the frame vertically and put your hand on top and kind of rock it back and forth if it rocks too much the frame the nails in it or your staples is already deteriorated enough that it's too loose that's the best time to throw some new staples in that'll save your frames from dropping on you when you get full of honey yeah I guess the uh, next question I got uh, on your class, you know, I've never been to your uh, class. Uh, do y'all teach uh, artificial inseminating? Do I teach what? The artificial inseminating honey base. No, I don't teach that there. That's basically, especially by itself. It's like the classes for doing grafting, that's classes by themselves. Uh, usually come one day or two days and you sit in, you can do the grafting and then just practice it. But artificial well, insemination to get a good setup, you got a good investment invested in it. Well, say I've done got the graft and I've done got that other control. Uh, I was just thinking about sort of checking out the artificial insemination part. Do you have a large clientele where you're going to sell several hundred queens a month? Well, no. Uh, then I wouldn't even think about artificial insemination. To make artificial insemination, the average price is $300 to $350 for a queen. Now, how many people got in line to buy them queens? So that's the market right there. You're going to sell them to well, some breeder. I, oh, I figured that that would be a very uh, limited uh, thing. Yeah, I understand that, but I also figure... Uh, I need a little time to practice all that before I can even get where I can do that good. So I would practice I, grafting. A production queen will make you more money than learning how to do artificial insemination. Now, if you've been in the bee business 30, 40, 50 years and you've got a big clientele and you can sell, Jason Bragg is a good guy to go talk to. He'll tell you all about it, how much you've got to put into it, how much customer base you got to get. Remember, the investment is pretty steep on that stuff. Not everybody. And then I've talked to quite a few people that do artificial insemination. And there ain't not one person out there will tell you they'll guarantee that that queen will not fly out and remake. So another consideration. You go to the place where you buy a dog, you buy a purebred. It's sick. It's always got some problems. Go to the dog pound and get a Heinz 57. You drive over it. You can't kill it. Yeah. I mean, that's just my way of putting it, but, you know, I wouldn't drive over the dog, but I'm just saying, you know, a, an old alley cat or an old alley dog is a lot healthier. They got mixed genetics in them. Todd Prince is a, a, a student of mine. He's on the thing. Give Todd a call and see you know, what he tell you. I was just uh, I was just thinking about uh, like I said as far as drafting, I can do that. I ain't got much problem with that. How many hives uh, are you running? A hundred. A hundred? I wouldn't yeah. even worry about grafting until you get two to three hundred at least. I mean, oh, like I said, I've been grafting. That's yeah. not a problem. Because see, you can only be one person in one place. And when we set our graphs, we're setting, you know. 20 to 30 bars at a time. 
and each bar has got like, you know, 15, 15 cells on each bar and there's three bars to a frame. So you're doing a thousand to 3000 graphs at a sitting and you got to turn some numbers there and you got to have the customers to buy them. Unless you got a lot of money and buy a lot of boxes. I mean, you could jump that hundred to a thousand overnight, but you're one person. You got to feed them bees. You got to take care of them. One person, oh, no. two to three hundred is about all they can run. I got a full time job, and it's hundreds. Oh, uh, I have to kill me taking care of them. Just to be honest. Yeah. If you're not going to quit your full time job, there, I would even consider you know artificial insemination because from what I heard, the the tools and the stuff to get set up is going to set you back a little bit. Well, see, I'm trying to do what now? Did that help you out any? Yeah, that helped me out some. I, I may be, everybody tells me I'm jumping the gun a little bit. But uh, I'm just trying to, I'm trying to make this into a full-time job. Uh, well, I, I don't know if a lot of the my followers have noticed on my webpage I have gone from my $500 commercial class to a thousand because I'm basically, I'm running out of time. And if I get people coming in that's wanting just basic training, they can learn that at a B club. There's people that want to learn how to make a living. And that's what I'm basically trying to teach. Take the person off the street, give him the tools and the knowledge to open his own business up and be self-sufficient. So I'm trying to limit my teaching to people that's really going to do something with it. Yeah. You might consider doing teaching. You know, you can graph and you can build boxes. There's a there's plenty of money to be made in teaching basic classes and woodworking and, and beekeeping. Well, like I said, I, I, I do I do carpenter work, so boxes is nothing. Oh, uh, they easy to build. Yeah. Oh. Uh, like I said, I've got the crafting and all that down down pat, but uh, uh, I still have problems, <laughs> don't get me wrong. Yeah. Everybody does, but yeah. uh, I was just thinking about the uh, artificial disseminate. That may be something I don't need to mess with. Well, you know, I've been teaching for quite a while, and I try to tell students when they come, they get all excited about going into to doing bees, being self-sufficient, being in business for themselves. Pretty soon, they're making soap. And pretty soon, they're doing this and doing that. Concentrate on making bees and doing that. Or if you want to make honey, concentrate on oh. that. You can't go in oh, two many different I'm... directions at one time. That's all I want to do is to raise the bees. I'm just trying to look at all aspects of raising the bees. Yeah. Oh. I don't even mess want to mess with the honey cups and all that. I just want to stick with just raising bees because that's what I enjoy doing. Yeah. Well, if you enjoy it, it's like I enjoy it. It's, I don't even look at the clock. When it's daylight, I go work bees until it's dark. I mean, it's, some people yeah. look at their watch all day because they hate their job. I enjoy what I do. Well, I come in from work and I got... I go inside, I get me something to drink, and I head straight out to the bee yard and I'm married till the sun goes down. Yep. And uh, hadn't really got tired of it yet. So there you go. Well, hang in there. But, uh, all right, that's all I've got for right now. Okay. Okay, uh, over to Christine. Go ahead, Christine. You're still muted, Christine. There you go. Stop the mouse. It wasn't a second ago. <laughs> anyway, um, my question has to do with a five frame nuke. And I'm just a, 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 not just, I'm a hobby beekeeper. And I know you're a commercial beekeeper, but I know you guys overwinter nukes all the time. And your winters are way more harsher than mine. I'm in Northern California on the coast. So, I mean, our temperatures are really mild. And my question is, um, I have a five frame nuke that's doing really well. I mean, for the first time ever, I've seen bearding on 
a box in my bee yard. And I've only been doing it for five years, but this is the first time I've seen bearding and it was on that nuke. And I'm thinking, I mean, I know that they have a lot of bees in there and, and they're doing really well, which is awesome. They have a lot of brood. I'm just trying to understand how to get them through the winter if I need to take out some resources to make room for the queen to lay or can I leave her leave them alone? I would put them. a medium super on it. That's what I would do. You have any medium super five frame? No. I would build you some real quick and put that on there. Uh, weather has nothing really to do with it. I started experimenting with bees when I lived in Ohio and I lived up by Great Lakes, up by Cleveland, just south of Cleveland. And I ran 10 frame and I listened to a lot of people. You've got to have a box or two boxes of honey to go through the winter. I played around, I lost a lot of bees and I learned a very long time ago. You put them in a five frame box, they will go through winter with a lot less losses and better shape coming in the spring. And when I moved to the South and I started doing YouTube videos in 90, Everybody up north said I was crazy, but them same people that's called me crazy then, they're overwintering up north in five frame boxes. So, I mean, you know, the proof I think is in the pudding. So you think doing that, putting a, a, a medium super on top would be better than me putting them in an eight frame deep? Well, if you put them in an eight frame deep and if you're not feeding them right now or have a honey flow, you got comb? A drawed comb? No, I'm having to feed all of my boxes right now. Uh, are you treating comb. them? Yes. What are you treating them with? Oxalic acid. All right. You should be treating them at least twice a month right now. Okay. And are you, you got beetle traps in for any reason? Not right now? With respect on, we don't have beetles yet. Okay. Um, because I, I, I did a little, sh I showed these here. These are uh, Max Force roach traps. They work really good. Uh, you know, got beetles. Uh, they actually work good for ants too, if you got ant problem over there. Well, we, we have ants, but knock on wood, no. we, we don't have a hive beetles yet. These here, you buy them pre made up like this to come 72 to a packet, or you can make your own up out of political signs, just buy the, the flipper now bulk and put it in yourself it helps the beetles it helps with a lot of stuff okay so are you are you thinking it would be better to put them because i just wanted to know if i needed to like take resources out of the hive and put them in another i would not put them in a in a deep box or bigger box right now i would put a nuke uh five frame medium on top that way okay. if you're feeding them maybe they got nothing but brooding there they got any stores at all uh, very little. And that is the story with all nine of my boxes. Usually I leave, and I, I said this a couple weeks ago, but usually I leave um, an entire super on each colony. And this year I'm having to feed everybody. Well, have you done a, a mite wash to check exactly how many mites you have? I haven't done a wash, but I check um, the, when I do an oxalic acid treatment, I count the mites on the bottom board. And I continue with my oxalic acid treatments. From Are you there. using a wand or like a provap? How are you treat with oxalic acid? The old fashioned wand. All right. Are you putting a towel or a sock or something in the entrance to keep this stuff confined? Yes, sir. Okay. If you see your drop, you get a mite drop, if you're feeding and they're not storing, you might have a mite problem if you don't realize. Some people say they don't have any mites. But if you're putting that much feed and they're not storing any of it, probably got mites and they're feeding that honey or whatever you're feeding to them to the brood and the brood develops a mite and they're hauling it out. So you're wasting resources. It acts like your hive is never gaining any volume to it. Well, we're, if you put an extra treatment on it, you know, you'll notice a difference. Well, respect, I just started feeding two weeks ago because I started, you know, when I did my last inspection of the summer, um, I, I noticed that there was very little stores in there when normally I would be harvesting honey. I was like, oh, there's not enough resources in here. So I put feeders in everybody. And so I, uh, I, I haven't gone back into the boxes. This will be my second week with starting. Are you mixing up at least a two to one, three to yes, one? Sir. Yes, sir. 
I would think I would check close for mites. Okay. Because if you get a high mite load and it doesn't look like you got one, they're consuming the honey, feeding it to the larva, and then they get to a certain point and they're hauling them out. Okay. Go out early in the morning and look, see if you see any white grubs being pulled out. I, I do. I check early in the morning and I check in the evening and I have the convenience. My bee yard is right outside my window right here. So it's like, it's very, I'm very observant all the time. And like I said, this was the first time I've ever seen bearding on one of my colonies. And we had some pretty high temperatures. It got in, you're going to laugh, but it, it got into like uh, 93 degrees the other day. <laughs> and Are you running any vent holes in your boxes? Um, my there's vent holes in all of the boxes, except for that five frame nuke. There's not much ventilation in the top. There's if they're not getting ventilation, they're gonna come out and get some fresh air. Yeah. Are you running entrance reducers? Yes, because I'm afraid of the robbing right now. Well. Not on the five frame nuke. The five frame nuke has a very small little slot. I'm running several hundred hives and I don't have the first entrance reducer in. What did you say about entrance reducer? I have not had the first entrance reducer put in. I've got some 10 frame hives down there that there's none of them down there got entrance. Re the five frame, they got two frames of bees in there or three frames. They don't have entrance reducers. The hive's going to get a little bit more aggressive, protect that entrance. Um, I stopped running entrance reducers two years ago and I seen that you get better ventilation. I was just worried about my five frame nuke doesn't have an entrance reducer, but it's already very small. It's already probably what is the bare minimum, like three eighths of an inch or half an inch by like three inches long in the bottom. Do you pull that out occasionally and look and see if there's anything underneath that entrance reducer? Wax moth, eggs, larvas, or anything stuck underneath it? Well, there is no entrance reducer on the five frame nuke. It's just a small little slot for them to go into. Okay. If it's, you're going to build a box, I would suggest build a standard box, put it on a bottom board. That way you can open it wide open. Okay. See, this because you don't get enough ventilation, they overheat. This five frame nuke box that I'm running has no bottom board. It's just, it's solid wood all the way around, except for there's the slot. The, I'd take an inch and a quarter drill and I'd drill you a hole in the back, one in the front halfway down and put screens over it. Okay. That's going to give you a little more ventilation. I can do that. Thank you. Okay. Okay, over to Nancy. Go ahead, Nancy. Hi, Don. Hey. Hey, I was at my bee club meeting today. And um, there's another guy named Don. And um, he bought two nukes from me and one queen. And um, he just loves them. They were able to get, through our drought, 26 cases of pint honey jars. The most he's ever gotten before. And then he had a group of people come over from the bee club. And um, they opened up the boxes. There was like 15 people there and um, nobody got stung. He is just so thrilled that he can work with his bees without getting stung. There must be those <laughs> genetics, huh? <laughs> well, they're your bees. It's if you do demonstrations, like I've done, I've had people come with their kids and we've done a video on one five-year-old girl. We put a handful of bees in her hand. She didn't wear no bee suit or nothing. Mm -hmm. uh, that there alone will save you a thousand to two thousand dollars advertising, because the little girl, you know, they're not being put up to say something, and they're you know holding their hand. You can see the bees moving in there. Uh, just learn good genetics. Yeah, is she the one in the little pink shirt that says yeah. bees? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I just saw that. That was so cute. Yeah. Yeah. So if anybody wants Don's bees and you live by Baumgarts, they're taking orders all the way until the end of October. And Baumgart stores are located in Nebraska, South Dakota, Iowa, Minnesota, Kansas, Idaho, Wyoming, Colorado. Yeah. <laughs> so you can just give them a call and you can pay over the phone and they'll get your order and then um, we'll deliver to the store and we'll see you in the spring.
Thank you, Don. Booming over there now. We are. We are booming. Our um. Well, we we had two children. Well, we had Donovan to help us, and then we had some other kids help us this summer. Now they're in school, but um, our beekeeper. We we. <laughs> We hired a beekeeper to help us because, I, you know, I'm still working full time with Schuster. Well, I, I just dropped down to part time, but um, it's just too much. And, you know, we just to to keep up with it and to vape them and and to take phone calls. And it just the paperwork. I yeah. couldn't believe all the paperwork for this business. Oh, yeah. I just couldn't believe it. And then I'm um, having to run to the bank all the time and sign oh. paperwork and. Yeah. But, but it's uh, great doing <laughs> that, that quick there. You know, I always tell my students two to three years, you, you'll be off and running. Yeah, yeah, I, I think so. <laughs> I hope so. Um, we're we're going to come down and visit, yeah, because we're going to look at some property. So down in Florida. Oh. But yeah, we, we get the northern part of Florida. We um it's North Central. It's um Greenville area. So do your research. I watch TV. There's so many houses. You see them one day and they're already in a sinkhole. Yeah. Well, this is just bare land with utilities, and that's all we need. Yeah. So but it's right by um it's not too far from Tallahassee. So if we have to fly back here to South Dakota, we can. Yeah. And um it's right. By the interstate so we can just hop on up and see you because we yep, won't be yeah. that far from you and then there's like a, a Dayton bee supply not too far from there you mm -hmm. yeah yeah I think so. yeah so um now we just need to find a place for sugar or or just get some corn syrup from you well get yourself <laughs> set up man lake will deliver it to you they'll come yeah. out with a big tanker and fill your your tank up yep it's nice and flat, and it's a gravel road, so we could we could get Tinker in there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so we're getting set up. So you'll be booming in no time. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Don. <laughs> You're welcome. Okay, over to David and Tracy. Go ahead, guys. No. Hi, Don. This is Tracy. Um, we started uh, doing something a little bit different here uh, a couple weeks ago as we well, we had invested in one of those Sundance pollen catchers mm -hmm. and we, um, we put it on one of the hives in there. And of course, now we're just bringing in pollen um, every day. We're dumping it out and everything. Of course, we're putting it in the freezer, but now we're sort of asking, what do we do with it next? We're not <laughs> sure exactly how to you know, sell it or um, and market it or eat it or anything like that. We just know people have always asked us for it. So we thought we'd try it and I'm collecting it. So I don't think you got any, any experience with that. Not really have any experience with it. I've, I've had students that's gone into it. Uh, if you look at what the bees are bringing in, the pollen is going to be the baby food. So the more pollen you take, the less bees you're going to make. So, mm -hmm. And then, you know, it's just like everybody else. You only got so much time. You got to market this stuff, and then you got to put it in the freezer. You got to kill the bacteria, and then you got to package it. There's a lot. You can only go them in so many different ways. If you're running a lot of bees and you're grafting, you got all you can handle right there. Please. Yeah. Yeah. I think we really just tried one just to see what it was like, and it was surprising how much pollen you do collect every day yeah. off just one hive. So we were just experimenting and not really knowing what to do next. We don't want to really get into it too much, but it's it's kind of interesting just you to might try want it. To make your, your own pollen patties. You can make pollen patties with mm -hmm. them. You know, yep. That's yeah. another thing. Add you some essential oils to it. Uh, that's <laughs> another thing people right now should be putting a little bit of pollen patties on for a little stimulation. Mm -hmm. And if you're gonna, uh, if your hive is not real strong, if you're buying patties that are pre-made cut them up into two inch squares. Uh, we got some that are pretty good shape up here in Luda. So we're going to take a patty and quarter it. So put one fourth of a patty on. And I think there's about 80 patties to a box. Uh, and there's several different kinds Buy the ultra B one, the B pro, it just, the bees just walk over it, won't touch it. I've tried quite a few different ones. And the one that I, they like is the sticky one. If it sticks to your fingers, it'll stick to the bees. They like it. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think we use Ultra Beef for that and they love it. They just yeah. eat it up. Mm -hmm. One thing I noticed about the pollen that came in like today is that the color had just changed from a couple of days ago. So yeah. is and then it had a different smell. So mm -hmm. and almost like that dirty sock smell. So I'm thinking, oh, golden rods. Golden rods about the ready to start rod coming stuff, in. Yeah. So yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. Okay. And we're caught up on questions right now. Ken, I think I seen your hand up earlier. Do you still have something to add? Uh, Don already said it. I was, we was talking about the five frame nukes. He had mentioned putting a hole in the front and back and covering it with number eight. Something else I just wanted to add. Uh, if you do have a hive that's showing a lot of bearding and you don't want to leave it wide open because you're afraid of robbing, you just take number eight and cover up all of the entrance and just leave a small gap big enough for a bee to get in and out of uh, that's what I did anytime I made a lean split this year and I was worried about them getting robbed out by bigger hives and I had uh, real good success with it. So number eight hardware cloth or any kind of a screen can help. That way they still have the airflow but they have the protection. But that's all I wanted to say. Okay, thank you. Christine, did you have something more? I just wanted to tell him thank you. Okay. <laughs> all right. Let's see, who haven't we heard from yet? We haven't heard from Dennis. He's got something on his mind. <laughs> Dennis, how are your bees doing? They're doing real well. I've got them ready for winter, almost ready. I'm feeding them every day, hoping to get them down heavy. Now I told Greg, I'm going for a vacation. This bee work would be a lot of work. <laughs> I've, I've decided to lower my numbers. To a one man operation for <laughs> I've got too much going, but um, looks good for next year. We'll see how the winter goes. Everything's been treated. I've checked with the uh, mite wash and doing good. Beetle barns are in, and and I ought to be a CEO of Walmart because I've bought every 25 pound bag they've had every day for the last 30 days. <laughs> I haven't moved up to the big container yet. We're working. Yeah. That's the next thing. I mean, everything progresses. We we done the sugar actually by hundred pound bags for a long time. And then we start buying it by the tote, which is darn near a ton at a time. But when we drive over there, we get like five or six totes. And uh, it's uh, you waste a lot of time. If you start to keep track of your time, you waste four hours in the morning. That's on an average, say 200 hives. That's four hours wasted in the morning to mix up a coat of syrup, sugar, mix it up where it'll stay mixed. So what's four hours worth? I mean, if you pay 10 cents a pound more for, for corn syrup, it, dollar wise, you know, penny foolish. Well, I've got a tank set up with a uh, trash pump hookup and I got the whole works. Next year I'll be pumping with a hose. Yeah. Time, but I had no time to get everything ready. <laughs> it, it takes time, I mean, when, when it comes around to honey, I hate to see when it's time for the honey because it just drags you down. It's like three, four days of dark. I mean, you're out there pulling all day and then you're out there until one or two in the morning spinning the stuff and setting frames back out. I mean, there's just, I just don't have that ambition anymore. <laughs> Getting old. I get your age. I wouldn't have, I don't know if I'd be doing anything. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, I don't want to sit around. I mean, oh, right now. <laughs> But we've had a good year. Uh, I cut my business back, had a lot of business I could have sold, but uh, I decided to turn the money down. I didn't turn a profit this year at all. I just increased. I oh, wanted, I, I, mean, I could have, but I just increased and bought equipment and just kept building and building. So, next what time. advice could you give people that are going to watch this in the next couple of weeks that are just getting started and thinking about going into? commercial beekeeping, what would you give them the best suggestion to do? Uh, depends on which problem they want to uh, follow me on. I mean, hard lessons. So they want to get into building a bunch of hives. They want to get numbers up quick. Well, you better build a lot of boxes, what I got to say. I, I built several hundred, and now again, time's got me, so I look for a bargain and buy them in bulk just for the time and yep. I would also say grow with it learn with it you can go back real quick but 
And I guess the best thing for me is I'm a one man operation for the moment. Build up to what you can handle. If you get too big, you're going to get behind and the bees are going to suffer and you're going to end up backpedaling again. So I've just, them big goals are down to normal goals now. <laughs> And I'm in them day to day. Don, I was in them. It's 50, 49 degrees there this morning. And I was feeding out there this morning. And uh, you just got to do it. Yesterday I was doing it in the rain. So that's a normal thing when you're a beekeeper. But I enjoy it. It's just uh, I'm 63 and I'm not going to kill myself. I'm just going to keep down the you're number. You're young. I might be, but my body says, my inside says great. My body says I'm a fool. I'm going on 80 in January. I still want to keep going. <laughs> I don't, I won't make it. <laughs> yeah, you'll make it. Bee but keepers makes... live a long time to get all them bee stings in them. Yeah. I missed it out today. I didn't get none today. Got my share yesterday, but uh, haven't, uh, haven't had any problems to speak of. Had a couple of questions on a runny hive. Uh, you might have seen it on your page about the bees running out of the boxes, this and that. I figured it out. What was it? You had something in the hive? Nope. Uh, there, you know, you get all kinds of suggestions from everything and anything. Um, it seems to be if you find they're running out and it's not well, from like a... There was a certain genetic I used years ago. They was good about that. If it's not... Oh, Russian bees? No. <laughs> um, usually there's a problem with the queen. I find within a week or two, something's wrong with that queen. And they were they going to replace her. I was asking questions out of curiosity. I had a bunch of brood, but the bees were leaving the box. Uh, just a little unusual. But um, I come back a couple of weeks later. It turns out, and I may have missed the point, but it turns out I think something, whatever was wrong with the queen. Now, unless you know something, I don't. I've, I've just, you know, I had experience with the VSH bees uh, and had the Russian bees. In fact, I bought breeder stock here and I ended up getting rid of it really quick because uh, when you go to do an inspection, the bees are up in the air. And uh, the sort of hygienic ones, they're just too aggressive. And if you get a bees that you can't work, uh, even with a bee suit, it's, it's unpleasant. And when you're trying to sell bees, you've got to get the most gentle stock and the stuff that's going to survive. And that's what will build your reputation up. When you got a hot hive, it don't make any more honey. People want to say a hot hive makes more honey. Yeah. It, bee stomachs are the same on a hot bee or a gentle bee. The stomach is the same size. I didn't, I don't like Russians. I've tried them. Some people like them, you know, strong. And most of my stock come from Texas back in the early 2000s. I don't carry that anymore. They get hot after the F1 on. Yep. And that'll run the killer bees back. I do have some VHS I've been messing with and then doing over the last few years. But uh, if you come up and look at my hives, you'll see a purple washer, a red washer, a yellow washer, and a green washer. And each one means something on that queen. That purple's going to be grafted from. And the reds, she's dead. It's the first chance I get. I, <laughs> I go on temperament on some of that stuff. Queen lure, huh? <laughs> if I open up the box, they come up and they look and they go back down. Well, I might put a caution on them, but if I open them up, they just look at you like you're nothing. I like them girls. And then I've had a couple recently that uh, they must have bred some of my old stock, but I put an end to them. And I have two queens left. <laughs> so if anybody wants two queens in north central Missouri, uh, I got two left and I don't need them all. I've checked all my queens. They're doing fine. So, and it's cold enough. I'm not going to split. I'm just going to stay with what I got. So. Other than that, go on the marketplace and post it. Uh, right now, people are checking their hives, see what their stores look like. And if they get careless, they bump a queen, they'll need a queen. Yeah, I may do but, that. Are you got them already caged up? No. Uh, if I don't sell them, I'm thinking about just putting them on top of a strong hive and see if I can win them. I would, if you're going to get rid of them, cage them up and just put the sugar and everything in the cage and put a drop of water on them. They're good for two to three weeks. Yeah, I haven't met mine yet. I'm still pouring sugar to everything else. Yeah. <laughs> but um, try to get ready for Nancy. She's going to sell everything there is up there. I hope so. All right. That's all I got. Everything's yeah. running good. So, but the young guys take it slow. 
and learn, you know, I've been at it a little over 20 years and I still learned some valuable lessons. <laughs> well, that's why we have a chat so we can pass on that information and try to help one another. Well, I appreciate it, Don. We'll probably see you in the spring. Okay. Looking forward to it. All right. Over to Christine. Go ahead, Christine. Okay. Dumb question time. Can you guys buy, can, can I just go to like Winco or Costco and buy corn syrup for cooking to feed the bees if I wanted to? I don't know. I've never bought it that way. It would seem like it'd be awful high. Oh, I'm sure it would. There should be a supplier over there. Now, Man Lake will ship that stuff. They'll ship it in uh, five gallon pails. That stuff's expensive, Don. Well, if you stop and figure a five gallon bucket, what it would cost, I think 50 or $60, you figure how many bags of sugar you'd have to mix up to equal that. And the time that you wasted mixing it. You know, beekeeping is a, an expensive hobby. You got to make it a, a profitable hobby. Yeah. Well, this is a, my first experience of actually having to feed bees this time of year. It's really kind of weird. And I'm going to blame the drought on it. But the, on, the down, on the upside to it, I've got lots and lots of bees and brood. I just don't have lots and lots of resources and it's really weird because we're in a really abundant area for I think it's the drought. It could be. It's, it's hard to say without going through your hive and looking at it. But I would definitely check for the mites and that see if you know that there. I'll buy you a plane ticket. Will you? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> That's an expensive uh, inspection, wouldn't it be? But it'd be fun as hell. <laughs> um, Anything else, Christine? No, it's a, if you don't have a, I mean, it, is the corn syrup the same at the grocery store as it is where you guys buy it? I don't think it is. I think it's a lot thicker uh, because we buy some from the uh, store to mix queen candy up. And it's, it's a lot thicker than what comes out of the spigot out there. Hmm. It, it might, there's a corn syrup, it's a batch 50, 55, and there's a batch 43. And the 43 is uh, a lot thinner. The 55 is what we get. It's a lot thicker. But, you know, it's like you say, we don't normally feed and you normally have honey. Well, we sell bees, so we're not interested in honey. We feed just about all year. And when we stop feeding, then we have to go to work pulling honey. And that is a pain because you either got to have buckets or you got to have barrels to store the stuff in. And it's just, it's a whole new different ball game there. You run out of room storing barrels and then you got to have a barrel truck to move it. You got to have a lift to load it on if people want to buy up the, the you know, pickup load. Okay. Well, let me know if you need a vacation to the Pacific Northwest, Don. Okay. <laughs> All, right. All right, over to Dennis. Go ahead, Dennis. Uh, Christine, I've, I've looked at that and tried that. I wouldn't get the kind that comes out of the store. Uh, as soon as the air hits it, they can walk on it. They don't seem interested in it. It's a little different, I think, than the regular corn syrup you would buy in bulk. I could be wrong, but... I didn't do any good with it. Man likes or to dance or even the pro suite probably better. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. And I think Greg has something to add on the feed too. Uh, Christine, are you in uh, Northern California? Is that where you're at? I am. I'm on the coast of Northern California. Our, our, our temperature year round is very mild and usually we have an abundance. My bees, there's never a day where the bees don't fly. Never, yeah. ever. Hmm. Well, there could be a couple of things, different things that you might want to consider. But uh, first and foremost, obviously, California is a huge, uh, huge market for commercial beekeepers. So there has got to be a tremendous amount of resources out there with commercial beekeepers who are uh, bringing in tankers or totes of heavy feed. So you might get on Facebook and try to, you know, just kind of peruse through some of those groups 
uh, and just you know maybe ask the question if anyone has pro sweet um, or fructose um, for sale that you can you know maybe buy and some 10 gallon drums or 15 gallon drums or whatever you can move around and stuff's really heavy that's that's the hard part about it is even a five gallon bucket's going to weigh 11.6 pounds per gallon um so it gets to be pretty heavy but like don has said and we've, we've said over and over and over again you know it's more like a three to one so right now with today's sugar prices um it's actually cost you less money to buy uh pro suite um, which is, is m pretty much two thirds sucrose, one third fructose or fructose 55, which is a different formulation altogether. No matter which way you cut it, you're getting a lot more um, either fructose and or sucrose for a lot less money if you're buying it um, through Dadent, Man Lake or another commercial beekeeper. It might seem like it's a little bit more work to try to find some, uh, but you'd be really happy if you could do that especially this time of year, because you can put on a heavy feed, a two to one, two and a half, three to one yep. and a bucket feeder or any other feeder and just put it on and let them just get fat, let them build them up, um, put some weight on and then not, not worry about um, the forage this time of year for them. So I think it's something to look at, you know, right now the prices are going absolutely crazy with sugar. And so by the time you factor in, you know, if you can find the sugar, what the price of it is, the time that you actually have into mixing it, and also, by the time you do get it mixed, are you creating a shelf-stable product? Probably not, um, because if you're going to mix it thick enough to where it's not going to go sour quick, um, that takes a, a, a tremendous amount of, of pump power uh, to do that. Even if you do it by hand, um, it's going to take you a lot of extra effort. So I guess what I'm trying to say is it would be well worth the time to, to try to put some feelers out in the commercial beekeeping arena in your area uh, and see if you can't find um, either fructose 55, which Don's used forever. We've used it. I know Ken's used it. Works, works fine. Um, if you can find Pro Sweet, I think it's I think it's a hair better for them. They seem to do a little bit better on it. Um, and you ought to be able to get that in your area too. And that usually comes from um, from Man. Like I know this year, uh, we've been selling Pro Sweet here, uh, and, and we're 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 going and fetching uh, you know 500 gallons at a time. Um, and we're going to have the, a tanker start deliver it to our place so we can sell it to folks in Ohio. Um, so I think more and more folks are going to be that middle person for you to make it more available um, to the sideliners and also uh, backyard beekeepers because it's it gets to be pretty um, difficult logistically getting a tanker in um, or having the equipment to move totes around. But just about anybody, if, if they're working with bees, can lift a five-gallon bucket of it. Um, and so the great thing about it is it just, you know, it, it can set, if you buy it and get it now, it'll sit through the fall and winter and it won't freeze. It's not going to spoil first thing in the spring when you're ready to use it, you already have it. You can put it on those hives, get them built out. Um, so it, it's definitely a, a, a pretty, uh, it can be a real powerful tool having heavy feed like that already pre-mixed. So, um, I'll just keep blabbing on about how great it is, but, uh, definitely look into it. Thank you, Greg. Does it have so it's called pro sweet does it have like additives added to it uh, there, there is some uh, like amino acids and some nutrient quality to it um but one of the biggest differences it has a lot more sucrose in it um so regular granulated sugar is high in sucrose where fructose 55 has less sucrose in it more fructose the bees take it just fine however um arguably sucrose is closer to a nectar source um, so some folks will argue one way or the other that things like pro sweet or a sucrose type feed can be pretty beneficial for their diet and for what they're trying to utilize for different parts of the year. Honestly, I, you know, I've seen the bees do it awesome on 55. I've seen them do awesome on pro sweet. I think I see just a little bit of an advantage on, on pro sweet, but if I could only get 55 and I didn't have access to pro sweet, I'd, yeah, I'd be fine with that too. Thank you so much. Yep, you bet. You might try the pollinators page on Facebook, pollinators or bee haulers. Uh, there was a fella advertising a bunch of bees uh, he's got in Bakersfield. Now he might have a setup to feed all them hives over there. Uh, there's a dozen places around the almonds down there that have hundreds and hundreds of hives. And most of the time they're feeding them before they put them on the truck to move them. You might uh, take some buckets and contact them and find out they'll sell you something. And if you got the weather as good as you say, 
You go, why aren't you sitting on a commercial operation? Build them boxes, set them up. I don't have as much energy as you do, Don. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a lot of work. <laughs> I'm a supervisor. I'm not. <laughs> well, you got to start somewhere. Being employed by yourself is a lot better than, you know, looking over your shoulder. The boss comes in, has a bad day, and he says, today's your last day. That's why I'm the boss. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Uh, we're at nine o'clock. Anybody else have any other questions before we close for tonight? Nancy, I think your hand was up for a minute. Do you have something? You have to unmute, Nancy. There you go. I'm just so computer illiterate. I'm trying to learn. <laughs> it's, it's just so difficult. Um, I was just saying, with us, our situation this year was um, water. We just were not getting enough water, um, not enough rain. We're in such a drought. Our creek is normally um, running through until maybe August, middle of August, so it might dry up, but it drove... It dried up in June and that's unheard of. So um, we just started using the buckets and um, putting dishcloths in and then doing the Wiccan system. And they were going through a bucket of hive. Plus we had some extra buckets, but it was just all the water. I couldn't believe how much water they actually drink. Yep. <clears throat> they were very thirsty. You might put a pan under the discharge on your air conditioner for your house put some marbles in it they'll clean it they'll keep it dry for you oh that's a good idea yeah we're, we're out in the woods we're um that at the observation yard there is no um utilities so um we had the creek and then we just had to go to the water depot in town and we brought in water for the plants and and for the bees and for us get you an irrigation line Get you a tote and plumb it up and run it out a hundred feet and then set it up for a little drip. You'll have a steady flow of water out there for the bees. Yeah, that would be a good idea. Yeah. We used to feed bees that way. In an irrigation system? Yep. Method? 55 gallon barrel full of corn syrup. Just open the spigot up and let them eat. Yeah, we did that open system feeding um, last year, and we fed a whole bunch of wasps and flies and everything else. Uh, we went through too, way too much sugar, and um, <laughs> that was just unreal. I couldn't believe all the sugar we used. We won't do that again. We we found it, well, it was during the Corona thing, and um, we ordered our buckets in July, and we didn't get them until September. So there was we we just did the open system feeding because we didn't have any buckets. But then when we got our buckets, then it was almost winter time. But you got to stock up supplies now. Oh, I know. Well, we can get our buckets now within a week. But during that coronavirus thing last summer, we just were having a hard time getting anything from anywhere. Well, if you need frames and that, you know, Man Lake usually runs their uh, seconds and their calls and clearance stuff in November, get ready for uh, inventory. And you can usually pick up frames really cheap if you buy in bulk, large, large amounts. Yeah, I, I was real, we were really lucky because I bought a whole bunch of frames in bulk. And then the next year they were short on frames, mm -hmm. but we didn't have to worry about it because we were fine. Yeah. Well, you can go through several pallets of frames real quick. Yeah, Dave can put them together really fast now. <laughs> <He's>, <laughs> he can do them so much better than I can. I don't put them together in the truck no more. He, he just does it for me. They're in the shop. So, well, thank you. Okay. <laughs> All right. Last up is Greg. Go ahead, Greg. If you guys are in the Ohio area and you're looking for frames, foundation, boxes, wax dipping, we're kind of uh, opening up a whole new uh, kind of enterprise within our beekeeping business. Um, so we're going to be able to offer uh, frames, boxes, uh, we're one of the few uh, dealers for Premier Foundation. Uh, so we'll be offering that here out of uh, Zanesville, Ohio. We might be shipping some of that, but primarily we're trying to focus on our folks um, here in Ohio that we're working with on uh, teaching and bees and things like that, just to kind of uh, provide some more opportunities 
um, for them. So if you're in the Ohio area, you're looking for frames, uh, premier foundation, boxes, bees, I would be happy to answer any questions. Uh, and you can find us at our website at naturesimagefarm.com or also on our Facebook page. All right, thanks, Greg. So if there's no more questions, that'll do it for tonight. So thank you, everyone. Thank you, Don. And stick around for the after chat if you guys would like to talk, talk amongst yourselves. Thanks, everyone. Thank you for showing up. See you in two weeks.